Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my thoughts on the Ghostbusters 3 trailer. I am woefully unprepared with Ghostbusters paraphernalia to show you here. I have so much more than this and I'm just crying that it's all in storage. I have some of the toys from the real Ghostbusters cartoon, which was glorious. I certainly have the video game, which I can't find anywhere. I don't know why, but the one where all of the original cast came back, Dan Aykroyd even wrote it, and you had Bill Murray, uh, Harold Ramis, all of them coming back and reprising their roles. It was glorious. Even though it was a first-person shooter, which I hate in terms of that interface when it comes to video games, I shut up and, and I shut up and uh, played it anyway because it was wonderful to play through. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I don't have that. I don't know. Anyway, I, I do love Ghostbusters. I even have a Proton Pack, one of the old toy Proton uh, packs that like was a projector onto the wall you know with different ghosts i don't know uh yeah i'm sorry anyway i've got a couple things to to thumb through while we uh while we talk i'm a huge ghostbusters fan we've done the rewatch of ghostbusters one on my channel way back when <clears throat> i don't know if it's still sometimes there's bleed through or there's uh things that i get nervous about copyright issues so i'll, I'll take the channels and, and unlist them or take the videos and unlist them or whatever but i do have a we did one and we did some great commentary on it Ghostbusters 2016, uh, the, the, the feminist buster was awful in every way and deserves to be utterly abolished and forgotten. Uh, every now and then I'll hear people, even friends of mine, you know, who I respect in other ways, you know, come up and say, yeah, it was, you know, it was actually a good movie. It was okay. You know, I was entertained, you know, it was, it was fine. It was fine. Well, then you don't understand anything about mythology and what these characters mean to the culture, as I continue to say, and my respect for you as a human being, just, uh, just plummeted a little bit, <laughs> not, not as a human being, but certainly as anybody who's, uh, whose opinion I would uh, consider when it comes to uh, taste in art and whatnot. Uh, I've never watched a 2016 film. Uh, maybe, maybe objectively, it's an okay movie. That's what people seem to say. But the, the point is, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. If you're watching the Ghostbusters 2016 to see if it's a quality movie so that you can you can support it or not, then you're, you're not even somebody I'm having a conversation with to begin with because you missed the point. You missed the foundation. The foundation that they begin with, with ignoring all of this, rebooting it again so it can be agenda you know, driven. You know, what's her name? Uh, the lady from Sony Pictures who, who tries to push all this nonsense, uh, you know, her kind of uh, tool there. That's that's the wrong and a disrespectful approach to take on the film. I don't even care if they've you know if it's sort of entertaining or whatever. It's not proper. It's not the proper handling of these characters or the franchise, even though they they killed the characters. So, I have a great uh, Blu-ray edition of Ghostbusters one and two. I even like Ghostbusters two quite a bit actually. I know it's a you know definitely um, you know we're near the film that Ghostbusters one is, and uh, you know I hear the uh, I hear the critiques about it. You know uh, you know understood. Um, Ghostbusters the real Ghostbusters uh, cartoon of course is glorious in every way as I said. The uh, the uh, video game, as I said, that's Ghostbusters 3 for me. That is Ghostbusters 3 for me. It takes place, you know, not too terribly long after Ghostbusters 2. They're still in, in practice. They're still going through the thing. And um, that was pretty much it. So I love the trailer for this Ghostbusters 3. First of all, I just, you know, hands, just thumbs up in every way to, to was it was a Jason Reitman and uh, Dan Aykroyd and all of them who finally realized that that was not the way to go. I uh, was very disappointed in Dan Aykroyd and a lot of the original cast who were coming out and trying to talk about and think, you know, support that nonsense film, the 2016. Uh, it was just business politics. I get it. But it was really, uh, really pathetic to hear them try to support that nonsense. And it's wonderfully uh, redeeming now to to have them. Let's go back to this franchise. It deserves not to, to just be forgotten with that kind of horrible last ending. I know some people are saying, just let it let it alone now. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think that's the proper thing at all. I think when it's some, something you had so glorious, if you can, let's not have that be the last awful taste, you know, that, that awful taste be the last taste we have in our mouth of it, you know? So I love that, uh, that Reitman's son, Jason Reitman's coming back to it. We've got it written by Aykroyd. It's tragic. It's utterly tragic that by the time we finally get this film, Harold Ramis has passed. That's tragic. But what I liked about the trailer was that it starts out, and it seems like the movie's going to start out for a good good chunk of it anyway, with just Egon's grandchildren there. I like the different setting. I like the fact that, uh, well, let me speak with one thought at a time here, okay? Egon's, so, so we can't have Harold Ramis in the film. I like honoring his memory and his character with his, his grandchildren. So we can talk a lot about his character and we can see the influence of his character for a while and really establish that and honor that. I do hope it doesn't take too terribly long for the original cast to come in. I do hope they don't just come in as sort of, uh, you know, cameos and like, yeah, thumbs up guys. You know, the, the new generations here. Uh, no, they need to be more involved in that. 
even if this film is a, is a passing of the torch to a next generation, that's fine, whatever. Um, but but I do think they need to be more more involved in the story. So hopefully that'll be the case. But this is just a teaser trailer. It still could be the case. I'm you know does, we don't get a lot of information at all. I like the the setting. You know we don't have this urban setting which the first two films and the cartoon and everything has been. You know the video game and such. Uh, we have a more of a rural setting, so it's something new. It's not trying to just repeat what was good about the, uh, the the first film. You know that's where some of the pitfalls of Ghostbusters two came in, just kind of trying to repeat some of the things. But uh, but still, you know, you know, I enjoyed it as I did. So I like the idea that we're in a different setting, and I like the idea that we've got a different uh, a different feel to the film. It still looks like it's, you know we're going to have some funny moments. It's a comedy. Paul Rudd is a wonderful casting for this kind of movie. I, I'm really glad to see him there. But it doesn't feel like a straight comedy like the original Ghostbusters was, or even Ghostbusters 2 was. And I think that's the right approach to take. Some people might be upset about that, but the idea of the Ghostbusters, you know, when Aykroyd put together the story, he said he was obsessed with uh, the paranormal and police officers, you know, and, and uh, law enforcement. So this was the idea for the Ghostbusters and how it came about. And it was sort of a silly comedy, you know, let's, let's go that route with it. But it but it became more than that, you know, and, uh, and I'm sure they knew that as they were even writing it, you know, it became its own lore and it was just really a fun thing. And uh, so it's, it's, it's outgrown the idea of just a simple comedy. You know, it did that in the very first film. And certainly it's done that in the culture since then. So I like the idea of a Ghostbusters 3 not trying just to repeat the comedy aspect of it. It'll still have some lighthearted moments and still be, you know, very comedic in a lot of ways, I hope. But I like that it seems a bit more dramatic. That's really great. And uh, the touches of nostalgia, boy, they've really gone all out with the nostalgia, which is good as long as they don't just, you know, substitute that for story. But the idea of being in this rural area, you know, this golden, a lot of golden sunsets and everything like this sort of middle America or mid U.S., you know, uh, picture that we get there. That's uh, all of that. That imagery is is like it is hearkening back to this. But we see the old original Ecto one, you know, and the and the seat that comes out, you know, and everything. And the uh, we see uh, the original ghost traps and all of that that apparently Egon had had uh, locked away in the in the basement or something. I don't know. So uh, I don't know exactly the story. This teaser doesn't give us a lot. I'm not really following spoilers or anything like that. I'm, I'm not really into that kind of stuff. I'd like to, to just watch it for myself. But I'm super excited about the trailer. I just want to give everybody, so far, I want to give everybody a pat on the back for for going in this direction. Now, like I said, you know, we can find out more about the story and maybe they'll make a lot of mistakes and maybe I'll have some bad things to say about it. I hope not. But, uh, you know, I've heard some of my friends, well, Fan Man, for example, Fan Man is... He'd been burned too many times by fandoms and franchise coming back, and he's not willing to to even remotely give a look at this until you know because of the possibilities of things that might go wrong and stuff. I you know I understand, I get it, but uh, I think they've. I don't trust Sony one bit, but I trust Reitman and Aykroyd, even even given their misstep, you know, with uh, with supporting the last nonsense film. So uh, so I like the fact that they're doing this, and I, and a pat on the back to them, and I love, I dearly love the idea. That uh, that all of the feminists and social justice and everywhere are just uh, they're, <laughs> they're just so mad about this. You look on Twitter and they're oh how dare you reward you know toxic fanboys and blah blah blah. You can get over yourself. It has nothing to do with that. Stop, stop trying to straw man the argument. This is uh, this is about paying homage and really honoring the franchise and what the characters and what the lore means to the culture and not just throw it all away and make it malleable so that you can push your agendas through it. That's, that's what this is about. And that's what, what this return is about. So I, so I like that. That's great to see. And, uh, you know, we're seeing that a little bit with the Mandalorian, uh, you know, that return to that though. I think that's a, that's a trap. I think, uh, people are jumping on board to star Wars in general far too easily. I don't know. I, I've, I did a great interview about that on the fan man tonight's uh, show that, uh, hopefully he'll let me, clip that and, and put it on my own channel as well. Cause I, I articulated my thoughts quite well on that. But, uh, but anyway, we'll talk about that in another video. So Ghostbusters trailer, I get a thumbs up to that, to that trailer. I'm, I'm excited or teaser, whatever it is. I'm excited to see more. Uh, you know, there are things that I hope it doesn't go in this direction or that, but for thus far, what we know I'm on board, I'm ready to see more. So that's it for now. I'll be back with more videos, uh, eventually. And until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love because Ghostbusters is absolutely a hero story the iconic four and all thanks for watching